Yes, okay. So, yes, I'm Ros ben Mosher, and amongst other things, I'm a laughter wellness practitioner. Uh, probably not too many of us around. Uh, has anybody here heard about laughter wellness as a philosophy? Oh, wow. Excellent. <laughs> Fantastic. So I, what I'm going to do in today's session, we don't have that long. Um, I'm hoping I might be able to extend a little bit beyond the nine o'clock. I'm going to give just a little bit of a talk about what laughter wellness is, a little bit about mindfulness, even though you're probably all experts at it um, by now, and really how they fit together so beautifully. And then we're going to end today's session with a laughter and smiling mindfulness practice. Okay? Sound good? Excellent. So, so just to begin, um, just to just a little bit of a chat, just about as I say, laughter wellness. It, I'm actually delighted that that there are so many of you here that actually have heard about what this is all about. But it is a relatively new philosophy in in as much that. It uses the energy of laughter to promote all aspects of well-being. So I'm not just talking about your physical or emotional well-being. I'm also talking about social well-being and spiritual well-being. And as part of that, just not only just the laughter, we also include smiling, which um, I'm a very a big fan of. And a laughter wellness philosophy is either humour-based or a non-humour-based concept. So you've probably heard about clown doctors and all of the wonderful work that they do. And they generally, they don not a nose and, you know, they, they, you know, the big shoes and it's, it's all about, you know, slapstick and, and, you know, it's very much a humour, humour related laughter therapy. Um, that's not what I do. I don't tend to have a funny nose or, or big shoes. Um, I uh, am a laughter yoga facilitator. So there are other people that might use laughter therapy. They might you might have heard about people, say for example, Norman Cousins. He was one of the original um, proponents for laughter therapy and he had an incurable disease of spondylolithiosis, acute, much, much pain. And essentially he ended up watching humorous videos and was able to, with the, with the addition of, of quite a, a high vitamin C dose, he managed to buy himself a couple of hours of pain-free time. So Norman Cousins, you may have heard of him. He wrote a book called Anatomy of Illness in 1978, so going back a while ago. So he was very much about using videos and, and humor. The type of laughter um, wellness that I um, and very um, that I practice is what's called laughter yoga, and that is the idea that we use simulated laughter exercises together with deep breathing and clapping until the laughter becomes very real. Um, can I have a show of hands? Who here has participated in any laughter yoga activity? Excellent. Okay. So, so for those who have participated, you probably will know that I would imagine that the first time that you experienced laughter yoga, you may have sort of felt a little bit awkward or a bit silly and it's, this is really weird. And you're absolutely right because it's something that we are not used to. The idea of laughing when there's nothing really funny happening. Um, but the amazing thing about laughter yoga is that this is your this is your you know brain thinking oh this is this is a bit you know strange it's a bit out there but your body can't think your body just feels and when your body is laughing it's feeling pretty great so I'm going to just um, talk to you a little bit about some of the health benefits of laughter oh no we're not going to mindfulness next um, <laughs> I'm sort of doing this as a, as I say, a combination of, of laughter and mindfulness, and you'll, you'll, you'll understand more soon. So mindfulness, as you all know, it's a form of meditation. So meditation is the big umbrella, and mindfulness is one of the ones that sort of drops down. And it's about being aware of the present moment, noticing it without judgment, and exercising the brain's ability to focus, okay? 
Now, to do this, you need to choose an anchor to help free the mind, to keep, to get sort of like keep coming back to. So, who here um, is, is practices um, mindfulness meditation? Yeah. And if there was one anchor, like what are some of the anchors that you use? Say, for example, breath or something. What What are some of the common anchors that you would use? Yeah. Coloring. Pardon. Coloring. Coloring. Lovely. Coloring. Mindful coloring. You've You've heard about. You know, it's it's become you know very popular these last couple of years. What what else? What are some of the other? Yes. Sound. Sound. Yes. Mantra. Mantra. Sensations. Sensations. Yes. So you're absolutely all right. There's all different ways. There's there's no one way that is correct. Uh, I find, you know, breathing, mindful breathing, you know, coming back to the breath. Often if I'm doing mindful walking, that'll be actually just mindful of, of like, you know, the paces that I'm, that I'm taking. Um, and where I suppose I'm coming in tonight is really to, to talk to you a little bit more about mindful laughter and mindful smiling. And the amazing thing is that when you're laughing, you're very much in the present moment. It is the very essence of a mindfulness practice. Um, if you probably can recall a time when you were very stressed um, or, you know, things weren't sort of going great in your life, you probably, th the last thing in the world you probably thought of doing was laughing or smiling. Am I right? But in actual fact, if you can, get a more of a mindful notion to laughter and smiling and bring it into those moments, you actually can change your whole body's physiology to a much more positive mindset. And we're going to discuss that in a little bit. Any questions or anything you're welcome to? No? So... In terms of laughter, I think that that's something that, that we all sort of have grow up with the, the anecdote that laughter is the best medicine. Everybody sort of heard it and everybody says, oh, laughter is the best medicine. But how many hospitals do you really see prescribing laughter? You know, do you go to your GP and does he give you a laughter prescription? I wish. <laughs> and, you know, there's very good reason why your GP or why hospitals should actually include um, laughter as part of their therapy, not just in hospitals, but just in any community or community health settings. Um, now, one of the things that um, I've done is um, I was a lecturer in health promotion and public health at La Trobe University, and I conducted uh, a few research projects using laughter. And not just my own research, but there's a body of research using laughter. And in the studies that I did in aged care, with university students prior to exams, so a relatively stressful period of time in their life. And also when I um, ran a project um, in conjunction with Deakin University with dialysis patients, these were all things that we actually measured and, and we found that laughter, after the initial peak of when you start laughing, actually lowers your blood pressure. The other thing which relates very, very much to the whole mindfulness nature of laughter is that it stimulates, stimulates both hemispheres of the brain at the same time. There aren't that many you know, activities that do that, but laughter is one of those things. It's very difficult to be feeling cross, to be feeling sad, to be feeling angry when you're laughing. Has anybody been able to have that dual experience? It's very difficult, and that's a great thing. The other thing it does, it stimulates the immune system. It releases endorphins. I think that most people know that when you laugh, it makes you feel good. And that's, it's, it's a, a fact because those feel-good hormones are released. And it is a very aerobic activity. The first laughter session that I did was, um, I took, it was uh, 30 minutes long. It was my introduction. And I'm thinking, you know, 30 minutes, that's it? You'd think that, you know, they'd make it an hour. It's a bit stingy. After a half an hour, I could really see why it was only 30 minutes long because laughter is really aerobic. And as such, it's a fantastic workout. It really is. So I'm very, very careful, depending on my group, 
I, you know, if I'm, I'm working uh, in aged care, I'm not going to be sort of running a 45 minute, you know, full on laughter workout. Uh, you know, I, I break it in, you know, slowly. Um, the obvious thing is it is one of the most amazing stress busters, okay? Who here re recalls the last time, you know, you've, you've laughed, you know, just like a child and how it made you feel? Yeah? So when we laugh, it is just, you just forget your worries. It's one of, one of the things I always uh, ask any participants in any laughter session that I run is how it makes them feel after they've, you know, taken, place in a, you know, taken part in a laughter session. And I think the top response is always happy and the other one is lighter and more relaxed. It's just, it just gets rid of just so much. Um, and so there's other things that we measured and that was things like psychological well-being, um, which went up, psychological distress and anxiety went down, and fatigue also went down. As I say, that's, that's part, in part because it's an aerobic activity. Oh, we've lost some signal. We, signal went down. That's okay. Um, so one thing I might ask, and people who have done um, laughter uh, sessions with me before is, how many times a day on average do you think you would laugh? Okay, question, unless you've been to one of my sessions, you've probably never been asked before. But if we can have a show of hands, maybe if you think you laugh on average between maybe one and ten times a day. Okay, you show of hands. Okay, keep your hands up if you if you think you laugh between ten and twenty times a day. Twenty to thirty. Thirty to forty. Okay, okay, fantastic. And um, how many times a day on average do you think children would laugh? Prepubescent children. Let's just get that straight. Um, ten, twenty, thirty. 50, 100? Okay, you're, you're, you're getting close. So the research says that, this is the fun stuff that I get to measure, is adults on average laugh between 10 and 12 times a day. Actually, I think that that estimate's a bit higher than, than average because I work with a lot of people who are socially isolated or have got anxiety or depression or chronic health issues and laughter is not really high on, on the um, radar. Children laugh between 200 and 300 times a day. They like, you know, they're, they're playing, they're laughing, they, they trip, they laugh, you know. And it's, it, it just really amazes me to think that, you know, we sort of pat ourselves on the back. It's like, oh, you know, we laugh maybe 20 times a day, which I think is outstanding. Um, but really, what, what are some of the reasons you think why children laugh so much and yet... Here we're sort of, you know, there was a few people that, you know, maybe 30 or something. They're less stress. Less stress, okay. What less, else? Less inhibition. Less inhibition. inhibition. Yep. They're in the present moment. In the present moment. They just see everything as funny. Yes. No mortgages. No mortgages. <laughs> <laughs> less, less responsibility. Less responsibility. Any other thoughts? They're focused on fun. Focused on fun. They enjoy it. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. You, you've, you've nailed it. I mean, basically, you know, they are really good reasons that you've given. But this is some of the things that I sort of spend a lot of time thinking about. And at the end of the day, these children still have stresses, but they're children's stresses. Um, but, and, and adults, you know, some adults, you know, might be more playful than others, etc. What it really boils down to, I think, is, is that children laugh from the heart. They don't think about it. They just laugh. Whereas what happens with us adults is over time we get conditioned. We think, is it appropriate for me to laugh now? I'm in a serious job. You know, it can't look like I'm having too much fun. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to be shown the door. Um, and in time, we actually start to shut off our laughter. And, we, we in, and it gets to the stage where, and people may have heard me say this before, when, when I was living in the UK, um, it would get to the stage where people would say, that was really funny, that's so funny. And I'm thinking, well, if it's so funny, where's the laughter? So one of my aims for tonight's session is really to get you to bring 
the laughter back to the heart to get you to really become more mindful about including laughter and smiling into your daily life. And believe you me, it's not something that we always feel like doing. David, what's happening? I'm just trying to make things light and... <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to get back to um, the PowerPoint? I'll just, I'll just um, stop. I think that's what it was. Display sleep. There we go. Are we displaying sleep? Yeah, we're All displaying right. sleep. We're, we're Just... not displaying sleep here. There okay, we go. very right good, in. very good. Okay. Um, okay. Technology, it's another reason to laugh. Right. Um, the other, yes. May I ask about smiling? Have you got any data on smiling or is it equivalent? It's, the, it's a good question. So the question was, do I have any data about smiling and its equivalence to laughter? I don't have a lot of data, but what I can tell you is, is that smiling, and we're going to be experiencing it in a little bit, is um, a wonderful way of releasing the endorphins and you actually change your whole physiology by a really, you know, a heartfelt smile. There's something called a Duchenne smile, which was, a, which was after the researcher who was studying smiles. And it's a beautiful, you know, your eyes actually smiling and you, you know, you could, they've, they did research um, looking at college um, yearbooks of, of, I think I like, followed people for about 20 something years. And there were the people who were sort of smiling with that beautiful smile. And at the time um, when Pan Am was in, in existence, um, for the young people in the audience, Pan Am was an airline. Um, and there was the, the fake, that sort of Pan Am smile. So there was the Pan Am and there was the real Duchenne smile. And they actually found that there were the well-being benefits to people who actually exhibited you know, heartfelt smiles were that much um, higher than those who, who did the sort of Pan Am um, smile. The other thing, in, if you contrast it to laughter, is that smiling's not an aerobic activity. It changes your physiology, it releases endorphins, but it actually doesn't improve um, oxygenation. Um, it can it definitely um, induce feelings of calm because when you're smiling, you're generally feeling content. Um, so yeah, there are there are some commonalities, but you know, quite a few differences. So thanks for that. Um, the other thing um, about laughter, it's not just the health benefits. I was discussing well-being is not just you know the absence of illness or the, you know talking about you know what you eat or where you you know exercise. It's about our relationships. And what I'm noticing more and more, and I'm sure all of you are too, is there's less face-to-face -face interaction, um, especially in the playground. You know, you notice kids these days, they're plugged in, they're looking down, they're, you know, they're Facebooking, they're emailing, they're whatever they're doing. Um, but, you know, to actually get kids talking, to get people communicating, face to face is is becoming a challenge um, so laughter actually um, I've actually skipped right down to point number three um, really enhances interpersonal relationships and communication it's one of the most amazing sort of connectors you know if you share a laugh with someone you're actually building a bond and I noticed that specifically really quite enhanced um, when I was doing the project in the dialysis unit and I walked in and I'm not sure how familiar you are with dialysis units but they're not particularly cheery places to say the least. It was very confronting and these people on dialysis they spend about five hours per session three times a week for the term of their life. Okay, it's they've got some of the lowest quality of life indicators and when we walked in, you know, initially to run this project, I was, I was a little bit uncomfortable and I was sort of thinking, you know, it's almost, I sort of felt a bit insensitive sort of coming in, let's, let's laugh. I didn't want people to think I'm making light of their situation, but it was amazing. After one session, the bond that we sort of formed with um, patients, the bond that the patients then sort of formed with the people that they were laughing with, and then that bond extended to the nursing staff, you know, where it got to the stage where people would walk past the ward and it's like, hey, what's going on here? Um, which is not really what you would associate. So 
It's an amazing, amazing connector. Um, it really improves resilience. If you can laugh about a situation, it's a great way of actually being able to sort of free yourself of some of that stress. That takes time generally. Pain plus time plus laughter equals healing. Um, so if you can somehow, you know, reframe things sort of with a laughter mindset or actually be able to laugh things off, it's really going to be beneficial to your well-being. Um, it's very much, you know, helps foster, you know, just to rekindle those feelings of the inner child. You know, we are all children at heart, but I think that we bury that inner child so deep under, I don't know how many layers of, of whatever we, we layer them under. So it really helps bring out that playfulness, which is really important. You know, there's a lot more studies and research coming out now about the importance of play as adults. You know, some of the most successful corporations will have a games room, um, which, you know, years ago you would never see that. Um, and the other thing is, and this, as I say, I think this really is where the mindfulness aspect comes in. If you start to become more mindful about laughing and mindful about smiling on a daily basis, over time, you're actually rewiring your brain. You know, you've, you've probably heard about the process of neuroplasticity where you can change your brain. And by laughing and by smiling and by doing it more and more and more, you're actually rewiring your brain to a positive mindset, okay? And that's really, really important for just general sort of thriving, um, not just about coping, but thriving. Right, looking at the time. So we've talked a little bit about the health benefits of laughter, um, but there are also many health benefits of mindfulness. Probably some of these have been touched, you know, in the previous weeks in this session um, sessions. So we have got two nervous systems. You've probably heard there's a parasympathetic nervous system and a sympathetic nervous system. And yes, I managed to put them both there. Um, and the sympathetic nervous system is our dominant nervous system. Okay, and that's the one that's always, you know, it's there, it's ready to pounce on that tiger. I've just come back from Port Douglas and believe you me, that croc attack, did anyone hear about that croc attack? I was at that beach, at that creek two days before that. And I can tell you since then, my sympathetic nervous system has been in overdrive. I'm very pleased to be back in Caulfield. Um, so... Um, the sympathetic nervous system is the dominant nervous system, and then we've got the parasympathetic nervous system, okay, um, which is, it's, it tends to be less active. And the way I remember is sympathetic, the S for stress, and the parasympathetic, the P for peace. Now, what happens is that when we are breathing, um, we slow down our breathing, so in a mindful breathing practice or in any sort of um, meditative um, state, we're actually activating that parasympathetic nervous system. So we're actually giving strength to those feelings of peace and calm. And that is really, really important um, to just generally, you know, if, we, if we're, we're always in that fight or flight um, situation, we're really, you know, causing a lot of damage to, to ourselves. So that's where it's really useful. It helps create space in the mind it enhances your creativity, and as has been mentioned before, it helps us very much be in the present moment. Now, one of the things I sort of tend to think about is, that I've been sort of thinking, what does it really mean to be in the present moment, you know? Um, but really, I think it's, it's about being just, it's about being present. And why that is so important is, is that if we sort of tend to get locked into what has happened and what hasn't gone well and all of those sorts of things, it actually predisposes us to depression. As opposed to when we're sort of like thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to happen or this is about to happen or, you know, you've already, you've already decided that, you, you know, this, this headache's become a brain tumour um, sort of thing, you know, God forbid. Um, if you focus on, you know, the future, it actually predisposes you to anxiety. 
So when you're doing like a mindfulness practice, like a, as I say, a smiling, laughter, breath, whatever, you know, all those wonderful um, what suggestions you made before, you're just in the present, okay? And that's really important. Um, so, I had to, um, yes, of course. Can you repeat about if you're, you're in the future? If the future tends to be more associated with anxiety about what you just assume is going to happen. It's, 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 um, it's future oriented. So it also causes anxiety. That's right. So if you're in the present, you're not worrying about what could be happening in the future. You're not worrying about what was in the past. You're just dealing with what is, is now. Um, now, this is, this is just to touch on, on my little story, um, is that I was lecturing in health promotion and doing some part-time laughter, laughter therapy um, five years ago um, when I got a most unexpected diagnosis of bowel cancer um, at the ripe old age of 42. Um, so when I talk to you about laughter and smiling mindfulness, I'm, t I'm talking to you as someone who's actually really used this practice and it's essentially, I, sp I might sound a bit cliche, but it, it really has saved me. I um, mean, it's really, it's, um, it's, it's given so much to my well-being. Essentially, um, what happened um, was, yes, I, I had a malignant polyp, but the cells were outside of that polyp. And I decided to have a bowel resection. And then um, because the polyp was in my rectum very low down, not great for healing, um, I actually had an ileostomy. So um, people might have heard of a colostomy bad. It's the same, but it was just lower down. Um, and, you know, it obviously was a profound shock um, to, to be sort of told that this, this, was, this was going on in, in my body. Um, and really, I must say that this, during this whole process, um, I tried every, apart from the fact I chose surgery, which um, was the right decision for me, um, but I complemented my recovery very much with a regular um, mindfulness, the, the mindfulness practice, and any type of trigger that I could orient my whole body to a positive mindset. So that was not certainly in the initial sort of six plus weeks was um, not laughter, but after there was laughter and I, and I did, um, you know, thankfully I, I have an English husband with an English sense of humour. So we had a good dose of, uh, you know, um, the young ones and, uh, you know, just crazy, crazy UK comedy um, and farces. So that was, that was really important to my recovery. But on a daily basis, even when I couldn't laugh, I would do a smiling meditation. I would do breathing, um, you know, mindful breathing practices. And I would find that the days that I ensured that that happened, the next day was always better. Um, but the days that I didn't, you know, really give to myself, then um, my recovery was that much more difficult. Yes. And how long each day did you do? Okay, and this is the amazing thing. I don't, I don't know what you would expect people to, to do, but I found just, um, depending on the day, between 10 and 20 minutes a day. That was it. So, so basically, it, again, it depended on the day. For example, if it was a, a strange situation, um, but my whole diagnosis, I felt, was very much tied up with this whole laughter message in as much that um, about six months prior to this diagnosis, I'd been booked for a ladies lingerie party to run a laughter session. And I, it was th actually it turned out to be three days before my surgery. And I thought, how the hell am I going to, like, is this a joke? Like, yeah. <laughs> um, and I went in to, you know, do this, run this session with um, this group of uh, ladies lingerie specialists and I honestly I felt like I just was like you know just weighed down by a ton of bricks and I really just wanted to, to you know not go you know certainly um walk in the other direction um but the amazing thing is after I ran that laughter session it was like wow like all of a sudden this disabling lead you know um weights just just um 
lifted. And so it really depended on, I suppose, my recovery, I'd say, was about a year. Um, so just as, uh, one second, it was about a year. So it really, you know, you can imagine in a, in, a, in a year's recovery, you go through all different types of, you know, stages. So one for me was writing, very much journaling. The other was, as I say, so on, on days where I really felt like I needed a burst of, of energy, I would actually laugh and I would laugh and I'm relatively... Um, self-conscious, so I tended to do it when the family wasn't around so they wouldn't commit me. Um, or, you know, when I was driving, I would, you know, just start to laugh in the car and I thought, well, if someone pulls up next to me, that's okay. They're just going to think that I'm having a great chat with a neighbour, for example, <laughs> who I spy in the crowd. Um, so um, it really depended, um, but certainly for me, um, the the breathing and the smiling meditation was, was really important. Um, and as I say, it was, this, it was this trigger that just, you know, every day I would just make sure that I would do something and it would just orient my whole brain to a positive mindset. And I look at the journals that, I've, that I wrote at the time and I've actually just finished, you know, making it into a book and I think, my God, I can't believe I was so positive. Like, what was wrong with me? Um, but it really, really made all the difference in the world. And of course, you know how I asked about time before. The other thing I wanted to ask you is that lingerie party. Yes. It changed how you felt. Yes. How long did that last? Um, well, uh, it, it was instantaneous. Um, and as I say, I'm not going to be running a laughter session today. We're going to be doing a, a smiling and laughter mindfulness practice very shortly. Um, you will notice that if you do any form of laughter, if you do 10 minutes of solid laughter, it's actually equivalent to a half hour jog and it just does unbelievable things to you. Um, but 10 minutes, um, just of, of, as say of, of laughter, um, for the next day or so definitely helped. But then bear in mind, I was having major surgery within three days. Um, so I think, listen, I could talk forever and ever and ever. And that's, really, you know, I, I think that's great, but no, you might not. Um, <laughs> so I really would love for you to be able to experience. Um, we're going to do a smiling and a laughter meditation. And all I ask of you is that, when you do the, we're going to begin with the smiling and you're probably much more used to smiling than you are to laughing for no reason. So when you do start that laughter part of the meditation, give yourself permission to just go with it and know that even though you might be sort of thinking, gee, this is a bit strange, your, your body is not thinking, it's just thinking, wow, this is great. This is really good. Um, and just go with it. So um, people sort of, you know, might like to say that, you know, you, you fake it until you make it. Um, and that's what happens with laughter. It's very contagious. But as I'm not doing a full laughter session here, we're just going to be conducting this practice with your eyes closed. I'm going to run through just a, a gentle relaxation. I think you're going to get two, two relaxations tonight for the price of one. Um, so I think, David, is it possible to dim the lights, please? So this practice will sort of go for about 10 or so minutes just to show you. Before we do, I'd just like you to make a mental note of how you are feeling now. So if you're feeling happy, sad, tired, I don't know, anxious. And I'll ask you again at the end of this short 10, 10 or so minute mindfulness practice, okay? So if you just make yourselves as comfortable as you can. And um, close your eyes. And the wonderful thing about having your eyes closed is that no one is going to be looking at you. And you're going to be taking just a couple of nice deep breaths in and out. And once more in and out. And I'd like you to now 
imagine a gentle wave of relaxation is going to pass throughout your whole body. And this wave of relaxation might have a shape or it might have a colour. And as it passes through your body, it's going to be releasing and relaxing any stress in your body. Beginning at the crown of your head, passing down through your forehead and your cheeks and your nose and your lips, releasing and relaxing as it passes down through your shoulders and your upper arms, down through your lower arms and out through your fingers. And just take another couple of nice deep breaths in and out. And once more in and out as this gentle wave of relaxation passes back up through your arms and your shoulders, down through your chest, releasing and relaxing as it continues down through your abdomen. in your buttocks, upper legs, passing down through your calves and out through the soles of your feet. And by now you should be feeling the benefits of that relaxation. Just taking another nice deep breath in and slowly out. And in and out. And I'd like you now to put a smile on your face. It might help you to think of a time where you were unconditionally loved. You're in a room with everybody just looking at you, just thinking you're just the most beautiful person in the world. And just sit with that smile and notice how you feel with that beautiful, heartwarming smile on your face. How your forehead feels, how your cheeks feel, how your lips feel. And even further down, how your whole body feels with this beautiful smile when you're being unconditionally loved. And I'd like you to inhale this smile. And exhale it. And once more, inhale this beautiful <coughs> smile. And as you exhale, I'd like you to imagine that every cell, every tissue, every fiber, every muscle in your body is smiling back at you. And note how it makes everything feel. Everything smiling, everything glowing. And just sit with that smile, breathing it in and sharing it around your whole body, getting it deeper and deeper. And know that at any time of the day, just by putting a smile on your face, you can rekindle this feeling of well-being, of love, whatever it is that it makes you feel. So just sit with this smile for a moment, breathing it in, and breathing it out.
beautiful smile. Your whole body is radiating this smile. And I'm, we're now going to move to the laughter part of this meditation. And we're going to start with just a simulated laugh, or you might think of something that's funny, <coughs> or just being with a good friend having a laugh. And it, as I say, it doesn't matter that we're going to start off with a fake laugh because you're laughing. Okay? So we'll just practice just initially just by taking a nice deep breath in. And I'd like you to then laugh it out. <laughs> That's beautiful. And breathing in and laughing out. <laughs> and once more, breathing in. <laughs> So now what we're going to try and do is in this room, we're going to actually just a crescendo of laughter. We're going to see how much laughter we can generate in this room. Now, just before we start, let's take a couple of deep breaths in, okay? Let's prepare ourselves, taking some deep breaths in and out and in. Someone's got a head start. It's not fair. And out. <laughs> Okay, now let's, let's laugh. If you just take a deep breath in and out. <laughs> okay, you've given me the... We're going to have one more round, one more round. I think, I think there's still a little bit more laughter in everyone. Let's go. Let's just go for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, okay, so when you're ready, if you just, <laughs> if you just um, open your eyes. <laughs> And David, do you mind if we have some more light again, please? Um, so, just before... <laughs> I love that laugh, it's fabulous. <laughs> so, that was about, about two and a half or three minutes of laughter. So, you know... Just, so before we just began that, that small um, exercise of the smiling and then the laughter, I, I asked you how you were feeling, and I'd just like you to say that was about, ooh, about 12 minutes in total, okay? So you're asking how long. Does anybody feel any different? Yeah. Okay. And how are you feeling any differently? A sore stomach. A sore stomach. You needed it, definitely. Yeah, you needed it. Happier, yeah, relaxed. relaxed, more alive, more alive. energized. energized. In a way. Yes. Oh, fantastic! My job here is done. Um, so, really, the point of that exercise is really: what's ten minutes? What's twelve minutes? You know. Um, and <laughs> I love it. Um, it's really about. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, it's fantastic. Fantastic. Um, the idea really is, as I say, it is to bring a mindful, a mindful awareness to smiling and laughing and to, to understand that it actually doesn't take much. It takes a trigger. And that trigger can be a smile. And believe you me, I was looking at all of you with your smiles and it is just, it was beautiful. But you know, you can, the thing is, is that you might wake up one day and feel really crappy. You know, things might not be going so well in your life. Not everybody has a rosy life day, you know, every day. It's not, it's, that's not life. But just by putting a smile on your face rather than a grimace as the first thing that you do in the day, I can guarantee you will qualitatively change not only your life, but everybody who you come into contact with. If the first person you sort of, you know, you leave the house and you just woken up on the wrong side of the bed, you pass on that to that person who then passes it on to, you know, it keeps on going. If you even force yourself to put a smile on your face, just spend a moment, just just be grateful, just be, you know, whatever it is that that beautiful smile conjures up, and if you then pass that on, it's, it's, it's very, very rewarding. It is the gift that keeps on giving. So um, I'm aware of the time. So I just wanted to thank you so much um, for coming here tonight and for laughing. And, and as I say, really just bring that laughter, bring that smiling back to the heart. Just know that, you know, you, your body is, is just appreciating everything, your whole well-being. And um, if you can spread that along, that's fantastic. And that laughter is just brilliant. So um, if you'd like to, um, I've got um, some... <laughs> I'm taking you with me. Um, <laughs> if anybody would like, I've got some business cards here. I've got an occasional newsletter. I don't hound people, but I do just um, with, <laughs> with some words of inspiration or links to my blogs. Um, and I do have a book coming out, please God, towards the end of the year. So yes, wishing you much love and laughter. And I really hope um, to see you soon and laugh with you again. Of course, of course. Thank you very Thanks, much, David. I think, um, I think uh, uh, it reminded me of being in an American just... sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> laughter, yeah. But, uh, yeah, thank you very much. It's it was, a pleasure. It was uh, wonderful to hear Ross's infectious laughter today. So. <laughs> and uh, please come, come again, have a look at the Spirit Grow website for more interesting and funny programs coming up. <laughs> Thanks, David. Thank you very much. Oh, a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Excellent, excellent. It's, it's,
funny because my friend was telling me, she's like, oh, I did this laughing therapy type yes. of thing. And she's like, we were laughing like crazy. And I'm like, no, you weren't. Like, <laughs> please. It's You're true. Thank you so much.